Bees are truly incredible. Did you know that both native and European honeybees reside in our well care filled hives at the nation's parliament house? Around 14,000 native stingless bees live in two hives at Parliament House in award-winning recycled plastic hives that allow for easier honey harvesting. While we have loaned these bees for the winter to the kitchen garden of Sydney's Government House, they will be returning to us in spring. The importance of native bees residing at these important locations is symbolic of the critical importance that native bees as well as our productive honeybees have to the health and well-being of this country. Bees play a vital role in our nation's food security. In fact, one third of the food that the world consumes is aided by bee pollination. Sadly though, bee populations are under great threat globally. This is due to several factors such as the destruction and fragmentation of their natural habitat, chemical use in intensive farming practices, and exotic pests and diseases. With Australia home to approximately 2,000 species of native bees, they are critical to preserving our country's rich biodiversity. But this biodiversity is fragile. Some species of plant can only be pollinated by a certain species of bee. If that pollination doesn't happen, that plant species cannot reproduce and can become threatened or extinct. While the benefits of looking after our bees is clear, it's also clear that the ACT needs to do what it can to create and sustain environments where these little workers can thrive and maintain both in their natural and agricultural processes on which our ecosystems and people depend. As the nation's bush capital, we have more than double the number of trees compared to people and more is being done to achieve our 30% canopy cover target and our 30% permeability target for the city. The ACT is also making concerted efforts to reduce the use of bee harming chemicals ban neonecticides and reduce the use of glyphosate and other pesticides that can decimate our bee-loved insect populations. For example, the ACT government has adopted an integrated weed management practice that reduces chemical use and incorporates other techniques such as flame weeding, biological controls and manual weed removal. We're also providing recommendations on bee-friendly plant species for the urban landscape projects as part of the ACT government's municipal infrastructure standards to assist with maintaining and enhancing insect friendly environments. This will help create pollination corridors across our urban environment. Yet there's always more we can do. A real opportunity is presenting itself with the development of the ACT's capital food and fibre strategy. The community and a breadth of stakeholders recently provided feedback on the discussion paper for the strategy. They supported a wide range of objectives for the soon to be drafted strategy, including the opportunity for the ACT and the broader region to do a number of things. This includes to transition to ecologically sustainable food and fibre production, to build the drought and climate change resilience of the ACT farm sector to increase the capacity to produce food and fibre locally, to support innovation in the food and fibre sector and enhance participation, knowledge exchange and employment opportunities across the food and the fibre and fibre supply chain. We've had an overwhelming response from Canberrans and people across the region telling us what they want from the capital food and fibre strategy. In the wake of several natural disasters and a global pandemic, a strong recognition of the need to increase our food security and strengthen our supply chains and our regional resilience. To do this, we need the availability of fertile land, nutrients and water in both our rural and our urban areas as part of an enhanced food production network. These will be a challenge in the face of our growing population and competing demands for land use. It will also require the engagement, participation and the enthusiasm of Canberra and the region's diversity of people with the breadth of skills, knowledge and experience that they all bring. The interest in the strategy shows us that we are on the right track. With this engagement, there is cautious optimism, cautiousness because some of the uncertainty by some stakeholders on whether the strategy will bring meaningful change to the ACT and the region to support sustainable and healthy food and fibre production while being able to maintain our unique biodiversity. 
optimism because this is a government that has the opportunity with this strategy and the planning reforms to address long-standing issues such as diversification, innovative and resilient agricultural systems and lease tenure for urban and rural landholders committed to ecological sustainability and land stewardship outcomes. The Capital Food and Fibre Strategy will be finalised in 2022 and with it and its subsequent implementation will come the hope, health and a hive of opportunity for Canberrans. In the interim, we as regulators, planners and enablers will need to come together to look at the policy drivers that can support the realisation of the vision and the objectives of the strategy. Before I close, let us celebrate World Bee Day on the 20th of May by acknowledging the significant role our bees and our biodiversity play in the well-being of all Canberrans. Without bees for pollination, our agriculture and our natural ecosystems would collapse. Bees are critical for our food security, our biodiversity and our ecosystem health, not simply as a pot of honey. This 20th of May, I wish you all a happy World Bee Day.